I have been a touring musician for like, I don't know, 13 years. And I've seen a lot of stuff. I've driven through tornadoes and floods and seen all kinds of disasters and car accidents. But I've never experienced the apocalyptic side effect of running out of <laughs> gas and water and supplies. Yeah. And that was sobering. <laughs> Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Wow, we have an awesome episode for you today. Suzanne Santo is on the podcast. So she's got a new album out. It's called Yard Sale. It'll be out at the end of August. Uh, she's also going to be having a release party at Antone's. Um, so just check her social media and her website and all that information uh, will be there. Just check the link in the, the uh, description. We'll also have all that information there as well. So uh, look, this conversation was amazing. So she, um, this is a, a solo album by herself. Um, she was also in, uh, she, but she's played with like Honey Honey. She was just on tour with Hozier. Like she's, you know her, right? And she's got this album out and I'm telling you, it is ridiculously good. Okay. I honestly didn't know much about her. Um, I, you know, just be frank, I didn't know anything about her uh, before this podcast. And I listened to her album and um, I, I got a chance to listen to it before it's released. Um, and it's amazing. I mean, really, legitimately, it's absolutely like ridiculous. Like, I'm beyond a fan. Uh, there were so many good songs on it. Gold Rush, Afraid of Heights, Island. Look, guys, it's, it's just so good, really. Uh, I mean, it's so, so good. It really is. Um, she talked about, you know, moving to Austin. She's new to Texas. So we talked a lot of food in this episode too. She gave a lot of cool shout outs to a lot of cool places. So, you know, listen to the end for all of that, of all of her favorite, you know, places she's eating in Austin and the places she likes to go. Um, yeah, she was really cool. Uh, just really enjoyed it. We laughed a lot. I, and I told her that, like, I love laughing. Okay. I love podcasts where we laugh. This is just one of those good conversations. This will go down, um, you know, it's one of our better episodes in that sense of just like this great conversation back and forth. The time flew by. Honestly, I almost felt like I took a little bit too much of her time. So I hope I didn't. Um, but she said she was having a good time. So and when a woman says she's having a good time. You just go forward. Right. So. And when anybody says they're having a good time, wait, this is getting I take all that back. OK, I <laughs> forget I said all that. Uh, so, okay. Uh, look guys, let's just get to this interview before I stick my foot in my mouth, um, again, cause that's what I do. All right. So let's get to this interview with Suzanne Santo before we do real quick. Okay. We got to keep the mics on. Here's a quick word from our sponsor, Texas real food. Hi, I wanted to talk to you about other things that are on the Texas Real Food site that are just as amazing as putting in your zip code, finding the best place around you that's serving, you know, all natural, fresh, organic ingredients, all right? There's resources on there. Reviews, blogs, articles, and most importantly, Texas Real Food recipes. So you can find things on there that really aren't on any other site. I promise you that and stuff that's pretty standard, but we give it a twist, right? That's the chef way. Something familiar with a twist. So we've got, for instance, cinnamon spiced hot cross buns. You can also find a great Texas strawberry cheesecake recipe. Just amazing stuff. So please check it out at texasrealfood.com. All right, back to the show. All right, guys, thank you for sticking with us. And as always, thank you so much for listening and supporting us. We do appreciate it. Please check out our social media, Lone Star Play TX. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps a lot. Or just hit the like button. Um, that helps a lot as well. So if you consider it content you like, okay, and tell a friend. Okay, there's a lot of ands here, right, that I'm asking. Anyway, 
All right, let's get to this interview. Thanks again for watching and listening. Look forward to this episode. It's amazing with Suzanne Santo. Uh, this is our last episode before our uh, finale. We're having a wrap-up episode after this, and then that's the end of the season. So this is our, our last interview uh, into the season here. So gr what a great way to, to end on the season here, honestly. Amazing episode. So Suzanne Santo, enjoy. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Patrick, I'm good. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you. Do you do you go this way? Is that which way? What do you mean? Oh, right. oh, which it honestly, whatever is easier for you. Okay. Well, it looks like this map, yeah, horizontal, because I think vertical gets um it, it did it just wasn't working, Patrick. <laughs> I, I know what you're saying. It gives that portrait <laughs> or that or that landscape. I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I never complain about those things. I don't, you know, I don't worry about that. I just, I'm here to talk. Like that's me too. Funny right? you should mention. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> are the, yeah, you got a new album out. I've been listening to your music like nonstop. Oh, that's great! Thank you. Oh my god! Like I'm blown away. Honestly, I'm a little speechless here. Like really, I've been listening to oh. so so much of it. It's so fantastic. Suzanne Santo, welcome to the Lone Star. Thank Play. you, Patrick. Wow, that that you know what? I had a really long day, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Like for real, like I, honestly, <laughs> I, I'm always, I'm always real about like music. What I, look anything, I, and people know on the podcast, I don't really listen to a lot of music to be honest with you. So I oh, had wow. never really heard a lot of your music before, and boom, I put this on. I'm like, what? Oh wow! Stop! 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 <laughs> what? It was like what? <laughs> Wait a second here. You know, you're doing something and it just like, wait a second. This is wow. I was, I mean, I'm telling you, it was ridiculous. Wow. The, this is uh, like, thank you so much. Stuff. I want to dig into this, like this, because you're new to Texas too. That's what I found so fascinating about this whole thing. You're new to Austin and coming mm -hmm. to Texas, you know. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're sort of familiar with what Texas is somewhat uh, a little bit. So, like, I don't know how much did Texas influence this album? Well, oddly, um, uh, well, you know, Shaky Graves and Gary Clark make an appearance on two of the songs. And I, I wouldn't say, I mean, other than having like Austin, two of Austin's finest on the record, I wouldn't say that there was a lot of Texas influence. And frankly, I had no intention of moving here until like, <laughs> it was just this crazy chain of events that I, you know, I took a hint from the universe that it was trying to tell me something and it was just pushing me here. And one of the best decisions I've ever made was moving to Texas. And, you know, I, I hadn't had much experience with Austin or, you know, I mean, I've toured through Texas for over a decade, but um, I've just come through here a lot for festivals. So I didn't really yeah. have a grasp on what the city was about. And I was in Los Angeles for a really long time. Um, and 19 years something wow. like that with That's a, a quick, long time like with a quick foray to nashville where i i thought i'd have a good time and i i just like to pass through there i don't like <laughs> to live there i've i've discovered but i um i was in la for a long time and you know it's a beautiful city but it's got a lot of problems and i didn't kind of realize how far in i was until i got out and i got to texas and it's it is a whole new game here and I love it's it. It's wide open, right? It's big and yeah. wide open here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole I mean, lot of things. Figuratively. Yeah, figuratively, of course. Well, yeah, and and literally. Uh yeah. It's yeah. A lot of things. Okay. So like what was your I don't know, what was your be be favorite part about moving here when you first got here? Um, well, first and foremost, I thought I was going to be lonely for a while because the last time I made a big move was when I moved to Los Angeles in 2003, when I was 19 yeah. oh, and wow. I, I was like, I didn't know anyone. So I, <laughs> uh, I mean, I really didn't, I was just like on my own. Um, and I, I didn't really like find my people or make, make friends, um, for like two years. I mean, I made friends, but not like the, the real kind that I, sure, I sure that I prefer to have in my life. But yeah. I got here and like, I mean, I was like running into people I hadn't seen in a long, like 20 years. 
And then I met this person through this person. I met this person and they, then I was playing a show that before I knew it, like two weeks in, I was playing a show here. And then like, and then I, like this group of people kind of embraced me. And then I started playing shows at this private club that, uh, you know, it, it's like, not, it sounded weird. It's like a Soho house kind of thing. Um, and like, I just kept meeting people and, yeah. and, and playing music and people, um, who are kind and of a broad spectrum of political beliefs, but that uh, have kindness. And, you know, I, I, one of the things I, I feel strongly about and comfortable enough to say is that um, the politics of Los Angeles are suffocating. Doesn't matter what side you're on. It's just, you, it's so omnipresent that you don't realize how it affects your, your everyday life and your health for that matter. Yeah. And when wow. I got here, there was just like, uh, a grace with people and the way that they feel about the world and the way, at least as far as I've been confronted and I'll take it, you know, <laughs> I, I would much rather have level-headed conversations with people that I don't agree with than be in a room of screaming crazy people. <laughs> that are all on the dude. same side <laughs> dude dude absolutely so sense, yes of you know, course are you kidding me yes be a little ambiguous but also <laughs> it's like it's just I get fresh it. air you know I get it. Look, that, mm -hmm. I think that's what's great about Texas I grew up in Texas but I moved away mm -hmm. for a long time and sort of came back and uh, and honestly I, p politics was never a big part of daily life in texas honestly till recently the last four years i think for a lot mm -hmm. of people but even so the climate you see on tv and whatever that's not really what was going on mm -hmm. to be honest mm -hmm. here just like day to day going about i, I wasn't fighting in, in the line at heb with people about politics like <laughs> like right. not at all i, I have friends mm -hmm. from all all backgrounds if you're from texas genuinely you have friends from all backgrounds yeah nobody cares Nobody yeah. care. It gets so blown out, like in the media a little bit here of Texas is one way, right? Like, yeah. I'm glad you're saying that you got here. There are different political be beliefs, but it's just a breath of fresh air. Of course, you're going to find mm -hmm. people being whatever uh, anywhere. But for the most part, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Honestly, you said, then, it, you said not, it a great way. Not, it's not what you think it is. It's not how it's portrayed publicly Dude, or in the media. Not you know, at the, all. The folks that want to do their own thing in more of the rural areas of Texas are still pretty cool and kind as far as I've come across. <laughs> Absolutely. I got stranded. Yes. I moved the week of the, the blizzard. I moved that week. So... I, dude, me too. That's when I moved. Really? I t dude, oh, no. I thought I was crazy for doing that. I haven't heard of one person doing that. I'm oh, so glad God. you said. I yeah, I got to hear this. But you moved from Los Angeles to Austin. Yeah, that week. A, so it was okay. nuts. Wow. But I yes. um that I was nuts. in. Uh, I ended up getting stranded in Fort Collins, and which is six hours west of Austin, and uh, there was a Super Eight that had electricity and most of the town of electricity and wow. like PS sidebar, I have been a touring musician for like, I don't know, 13 years. And I've seen a lot of stuff. I've driven through tornadoes and floods and seen all kinds of disasters and car accidents, but I've never experienced the apocalyptic side effect of running out of <laughs> gas and water and supplies. Yeah. And that was sobering. <laughs> and I, I yeah. didn't realize how bad it was until the closer I was getting to Austin. And, you know, the weather was clearing up then, but like there's cars all over the road, just abandoned. There's, you know, no gas for, for hours at a time. So I would stock up. So I, uh, my sister and her boyfriend helped me move. So we had a Penske truck and then my car with my two cats in it. And oh we would take God. turns on who would drive the truck. But I, there was this, I was at, in Fort Stockton. And I almost remember the name of this cafe. I want to say it was called the sagebrush. Uh, and it was, this woman had a, it was like a boutique slash coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> and she was so kind to me. And when she knew, like I was going in every day cause I was there for a few days and I love coffee. So I needed coffee in the morning, you know? Yeah. And, and, um, uh, the day before I left, she said, honey, I know it's going to be hard out there. So I, I filled up these uh, jugs of water for you just in case you have trouble on the road. And it was like, I was wow. like, you know, just the kindness of her heart, knowing that I was, I was just this stranger going on this journey. And that was like, 
I mean, people are kind all over the place, but there was something about it that spoke Texas to me, you know, <laughs> like on another level of, of <laughs> kindness. And, yeah. you know, um, the, it was a, it was a great part of the, the journey, but, Absolutely. Um, That's hilarious. but I, yeah, I, I feel like there's a, uh, a liberal element to people that want to live their lives how they want to live their lives. And it's, it's all over this place. And I, and I really respect it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a great, no, that's a, that's a great way to put it. And what a great word to use too, because you didn't use it politically. You just meant liberally yeah. we're that's how we are in this state again like i'm a liberal myself and you know people mm -hmm. how can you live in texas I, I dude i'm like what are you talking about there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with tech like honestly you would never know that about a lot of people here you know what i mean mm -hmm. just living day to day you're really not gonna get mm -hmm. down to that and the nitty-gritty it's like we got life to live we don't have mm -hmm. time to talk about this other crap, you know, uh, this, these other things that get in the way that it seems like it gets in the way in other people's lives. Like, you know, you're talking about Los Angeles, like, thank God mm -hmm. it's not like that here. No, I mean, well, because there's God. a different set of values here. Um, yeah. I think that the, the, like, and it's in, it's in the ground. It's, it's like, there's, there's like, there are roots of, of a value system here that I I've sensed since I got here. Um, and it's, um, there's a lot of kindness. There's a lot of freedom. There's a lot of love for this country. And, uh, in, in ways that, uh, I think are so valid and, yeah. um, well, I love this. I love hearing about this, Texas, my state here. I love this. this yeah. <laughs> well, and <laughs> so I think cool. there's, there's like an identity crisis throughout the, a uh, lot of the country. Sure. And, you know, Texas has always prided itself on being Texas. Uh, so te Texas you know, first, uh, America yeah. second here. <laughs> so when, you know, we got a lot of people that are losing their minds in the political vacuum and all the, you know, just like fear mongering and the things that are coming at us every day. Uh, I just like, I can't believe how long I was in that. And then when totally. I got here, it was just like this huge uh, awakening, I guess. You know what and it I, is? I, I think I think Texans are aware mm -hmm. of people around them, right? Yeah. So th that, that's, that's a all value it is. System. Yeah, that, that's all yeah. it is. We're just more aware of people around us. Like, so that's why we mm -hmm. open a door for you because I'm not I'm a human being. Like, I see you coming. I'm gonna hold right. the door. Right. Yeah. Like, just compare. You know, as the opposite and to exaggerate, like New York City. Right. Like, I've been to New York. Mm -hmm. I, I used to live in Philly. You know, mm -hmm. Philly, for example, you're, you're in your own little bubble. Like go I get Eagles. it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, go <Eagles. laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. Yeah, dude, for real though. But yeah, you know, like you're just in your zone, you're doing your thing and that's not Texas. That's you just mm. don't do that here. You're just aware of things and people mm -hmm. around you. So you're willing to help you say, hi, you wave, you smile, you, yeah. and when you don't get that somewhere else, it feels odd. It yeah. does feel it feels odd, actually, Texans traveling about because that, they're the people you see and wave and how you doing what they tell you their, their yeah. whole life story and, and one bus yeah. ride, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. which is great. Like, you know, that's Texans like that's how we are. I wouldn't I wouldn't change it uh, for the world, honestly. Yeah, me either. It's right? a beautiful place. Dude, <laughs> it's, so, it's so cool. And you're in Austin, right? Mm -hmm. you're in and Austin. I know that Austin's sort of like a you know, an iteration of Hollywood at this point, but it is and it isn't, you know, there's still like good old music being played here oh, at, yeah. at Saxon pub and at sea boys and all these places that yes. uh, have uh, just an affinity for music. And that that's another thing that I, I just love is uh, the camaraderie here with the caliber of musicians and um how kind everyone is to each other in this way where, you know, you mentioned New York and obviously like New York is a global city, but you get a lot of people that have moved to New York city or Los Angeles, um, you know, chasing something like a dream or an idea. And there's a real desperation that comes with that. And, a um, you know, a cutthroat kind of yeah. <laughs> make your way through. And that has never resonated with me. And, um, I existed in that 
world for a long time. And it's just so, so refreshing to have, uh, again, you know, that just level of awareness for each other and, and like making, making space for somebody on a stage musically, even, you know, where it's just, there's a, a whole nother level. And I, I just got out of rehearsal with Gary Clark and his band and, um, you know, we're playing this thing tomorrow called blues on the green and, um, yeah, at Zilker park. Zilker park. And yeah. like, I mean, I had to, well, one, I had to chill out and calm myself down. Cause I was with all these big dogs and like, <laughs> you know, kind of like let myself feel like, like, remember that I belong at the, this Absolutely. table. You know, this Are seat, you kidding but, me? But I, it's like, but yes. you know, when I'm around them, I'm just like, Oh my God, you know, like they're, I, they're just incredible musicians like Gary, uh, obviously, and his band. And then he has all these other people in town that are playing and I'm like, you know, fangirling out, but then also like, 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 Hey, cool. cool." Yeah. Yeah. Keep it cool. But 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 everybody's cool as a cucumber. Nobody's being a dick. You know, they're just like, let's play some music together. Let's have a great time. Yes. Yes. (laughs) It's awesome. It's like, let's just chill. That's like that, that, right. Like, let's just chill. Let's just have a yeah. few drinks. Let's let's play some music. Let's have a good time. I love I love hearing you say this. This is so cool. Is, uh, <laughs> really, really, I mean that. But look, I by the it. way, they, they should not. be they're they're excited to play with you too. I promise oh. you. Like for I mean, think <laughs> about it. Let's you. be real here. Let's be real. Uh, you know, for real. It's a, that's what makes it great though. Everybody's sort <laughs> of you. recognizing like, oh, dude, we're all greats up here. This is awesome and a great crowd. Blues on the green crowds are. Amazing. I'm so excited. Dude, it's gonna be really very good. hot. Yes. <laughs> it'll cool down. Like, what time are you guys right. playing at? Show starts at eight. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be a good, you know, a yeah. good time by then for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. that's awesome. And you got a great view. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's like one of the best events in Austin. That oh my God. It's wow. on the green. Yeah, yeah, for real. Oh, wait till you see it. Yeah, the food. <laughs> I'm all about, I'm all about okay. the food. I used to have a food okay. truck there in Austin uh, for Did many you really? years. Yeah, yeah. I had a what food truck food? for many years. Spanish food. I used to do Spanish food. <gasps> oh and my god! So, uh, so all the food trucks there, like they go to Blues on the Green, are awesome. You're gonna oh, love great. all the different food that's Good there. Good for you. Yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. foodie. Oh, dude, the I, food uh, there is great. My family owned a restaurant uh, growing up, so I grew up. It's Italian food. And uh, it's all my grandma's recipes, and uh, it's oh, still mo- in the, the family mother sauces over, over Absolutely. 60 years. Yeah, but it's <laughs> like I always wanted them to get a food truck and take it down because I'm from Cleveland, and like you know, pizza and meatball subs at the Browns games. I mean, just Dude, make it do- rain. <laughs> yes, yeah, I love this. Oh my god, no one ever did it though. Santos food truck still has not yet uh, come bro. to fruition. <laughs> bro, bro, you could do that. You could do that. You're the perfect city for food truck. I mean, that's I why I moved to Austin. I moved to Austin just to open my food truck because wow. of the, the ecosystem, the, the camaraderie you're mentioning about the musician. Yeah. Same with uh-huh. the food trucks in Austin. Yeah. Other that's cities, cool. it's not like that. Austin, right. we, dude, there's email chain. Everybody's helping. You're texting each other. You're you're all in it together for the most part, right. you know, the yeah. ones that don't, they're either going to fail or their food is right. just so amazing. They don't have time to talk to anybody because they're, mm. they're so focused on what they're doing, but that's, <laughs> ra- that's super rare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I just had Aaron Franklin on and we were talking about Franklin's like when he opened Franklin's Wow. and he was like, look, dude, you know, just keep it simple. You know, when you start yeah. off, you know, uh-huh. just make everything right, but keep it simple, right? Go slow, get it right. Mm-hmm. Did you, what about like musically? Does that apply musically? Like when you started like musically, did you try to totally. like, totally? you know, let me just take this slow and build up how I'm doing that. Cause a, a lot of people just jump right in. Well, and it's like, it's called overplay. Start going. You okay, can overplay, yeah. Yeah. you can over uh, inflect as a vocalist. You could just like, Pull it back a little bit, you know, yeah. <laughs> you could just say it a little more simpler, simply. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, that's the thing that's, you know, music is the one of the most important things about music as a musician and as a player is listening. Yeah. So, you know, you could apply that to 
food as well. It's like, you have to taste your food <laughs> and, and maybe what? like one bite at a time, you know? <laughs> oh my listen, God, we got to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> listen, mind blown. I'm mind blown over here. Listen, I love, I love this analogy. That's, that's the version of tasting the food is, is just listening when you're, you're the music. That's awesome. <laughs> Wow. wow. You know, one of my friends told me once uh, as like a, I mean, this is a lot because some of us are fast eaters. Um, <laughs> uh, she said she was like working on this practice of enjoying her food more. And she would like make sure she smelled it before she took a bite and then would like savor it. Yeah. And I mean, it depends on where you're eating. Obviously, sometimes that's that's required, to, you know, depending on the Absolutely. cuisine and the yes, time and the place. Yes. But I thought that was interesting because, you know, um, a lot of times, and I love food and food is love to me and family and experience and, yeah. you know, um, so many things. And I grew up, like we ate dinner together as a family and this was before cell phones. So like it was, it was our time together. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times when I'm on the road, I, I mean, food is just fuel too. I have to just like Hoover it and go. <laughs> and like, I don't care what it is. Sometimes I'm like, all right, I'll eat that peanut butter. And, uh, I guess I have some rice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I'm just like, that's all I got. Get, get to the show. You know, like that's been my life. We've all been the there. Trust me. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, we've all been there. Trust me. Yeah, okay. Look, chefs, chefs usually eat the worst. Okay, that's the truth. Yeah, that is you, true. You, you know, and speaking mm -hmm. of eating fast, I eat fat. I still to this day for being so long in the restaurant industry, when I get food, it's inhaled. And I and, and I don't standing sit, up you're and I don't <laughs> sit down. Exactly. I always stand up, you know, constantly. <laughs> right. I'm I'm always perched somewhere in a corner in the darkness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Quick as quick as I or on a milk yeah. crate. I, I even yeah. bought milk crates for my home, just like <laughs> So I feel you. so I feel like I'm at work. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's hilarious. You say that, you, you know, I always smell the first bite of whatever it is. So okay. and after that, yeah, I'm going to town. Yeah. But this, the first yeah. bite of whatever, if it has three things, on, OK, I'm gonna smell each thing. And then yeah. I'm gone. I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm gone. You know, there's no more. I'm, I'm, I'm well, eating you know, it. If you wanted to stop, you could. And it, it's not like you're, I'm sure you're having a good time at that point. It smells <laughs> the same after that. Yeah. It is not going right. to change. Okay. Is that like, is that, <laughs> it's, not, it's not, that that's it. You, you got, you know, but I agree with the first one because smell, you have more, you know, more re what receptacles. Is that the right word? I don't Faculties. know. Receptors. Re yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. I don't oh, know no, here. Receptors. Okay. I think you're right. Yeah. Is and that it? Be Listen, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't know. Good. It sounds right. Okay. We're going to go with that. In your nose, then you do your mouth, like, right? Like your taste buds. You have very sure. few taste buds. So that's more like texture and some other thing, Heat, you know, temperature. Uh, yeah. But the nose is really, uh, and where the memories come from. Anytime, oh, yeah. anytime, you know, you eat something, it's the smell of it that takes you back, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn, this, that, you, know, you know, I read this book. Uh, I think it's called gut if I'm not mistaken. And it's this, uh, great doctor. Name. It's it's, I know it sounds a little scary. No, but, I like it. Uh, I like it. it. It's her. And she, it's really well written and you'll laugh. Like it's funny, but she, uh, is some kind of, you know, uh, GI doctor expert. I don't know what you would call it. Um, but she talks about, she runs through all of what happens to our body the minute we have a piece of food in front of us. And it starts with, um, you know, your, your sensory wow. faculties of your nose. Yeah. And then all these really crazy things happen in your mouth where um, certain saliva starts firing up to induce uh, enzymes that'll break down your food. And then yeah. it's like trash cans of like, this is where we put the stuff we don't want. This is where we put the good stuff. And it's like happening instantly in your mouth. Wow. And there's like, I mean, it's, it's great. Like on these That's like insane. microscopic levels. No. And it, like, you know what? I never finished it. And I should finish that book because it's really fascinating. Um, Our, we're, we're amazing machines. What we do, we really body, are, you know, mm -hmm. and at the same time, like not, you know, it's like crazy. We're such weird people, you know, like some things you, you think this is not the best way it should be. Without other things, you just, I'm blown away by our bodies and what they can Me do. Me too. And, that's yeah. an amazing process. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. No, I, I think um, the more I learn about my body, the more 
I feel amazing, you know, because you're, you're right. We are fascinating and uh, we're capable of so much. Uh, and we don't, a lot of us don't realize that, you know, that's a great point. That's a absolutely a great point. I don't think, you, you mm-hmm. know, as you get older, right. When you're younger, you don't care about your body. It's young. It's you, but you're bruising. You ju- I remember I used to jump out of trees when I was a kid. Yeah, for no reason. It's like stupid. I like, yeah. It was like, yeah. why did I, do? I would literally outdoor just kid. hit the branches. <laughs> yeah. Outdoor kid, you know, the old days. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, as you get older, that's, yeah, that's why you, it, your body matters more because things start to, you notice mm-hmm. it more. You're more aware of it. Yeah. Oh, d- damn. I didn't, what the hell? This isn't the same yeah. anymore. Right. And so you start to care about it more and put more into it. And then you're amazed by it. And then now you want to take care of it all of a sudden. Right. You know? yeah, right. Like it could be yeah. too late, you know? Oof. Well, I think Got too, sooner like, the we better. also have a lot of like limitations put on us by our own uh, misunderstanding too. You know, like I actually have been reading this book called Healing Back Pain, which is about the mind body connection of like our emotions to our physical pain and like how there's a direct correlation and uh, like, you know, 80% of the time it's like the, the, you know, calls are coming from inside the house, you know, yeah. <laughs> and so you, like, you know, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> So, oh shit. Oh shit. You know, I got him. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, I I I try to like sift through that a lot in my everyday life of just like what am I creating? What am I fixating on that like I could just like be so much better without that thought. Um, you know. Yeah. It's I especially when I'm, I'm really trying to navigate through the media and the social media and that aspect of how our brains are being restructured. I mean, it's like, we're up against a lot. <laughs> yes. We're up against everything. The, the internet yeah. is everything, right? It's like, you're literally mm-hmm. up against everything every day, you know, mm-hmm. essentially digitally, you know, in, in mm-hmm. some way. Uh, yeah, you're right. That's a lot. It, I read that that's kind of, you know, this new album, like it's sort of, touches on that like you know picking what you care about most right like and Mm -hmm. focusing on that and bringing your energy towards that right and not Mm -hmm. wasting your time on things that are going to just add to the negativity which is just exponential right that stuff just adds up and can become too much to handle at some point Right. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like hoarding, you know, it just like piles yeah. up and then it, it gets really hard to move around. You can't, it gets really hard <laughs> to exist anywhere, you know, when you have, you're carrying too much shit around or you have it in your house. Um, yeah. and yeah, I, you know, it's, a, it, there's a bunch of different metaphorical references to the, the title yard sale of, yeah. of the, you know, the record's called yard sale. Um, there, there's that, um, there is that, I kind of feel like there's something for everyone. Like you would find at a yard sale. There's just like, Oh, here's a, you know, a desk lamp and a racket <laughs> ball racket. And, you know, like, and like, you know, someone could be like, Oh my totally. God, I've, I've been looking for that uh, crock pot my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, shit, shit I don't you know. didn't know you need that, you know, right. You need, right. Like, right. <laughs> so I, I kind of feel like there's, you know, it's like, there's a real, um, hodgepodge i guess in that way and then also you know that term like if a lady drops her purse and it dumps out and someone goes yard sale (laughs) it kind of feels like i just like jumped out a purse of emotions and it's like "Ah!" (laughs) so Uh. yeah take take whichever one works best (laughs) That's interesting. When you when you started to write this, was that like the idea or did it become yard sale because it was kind of like that? It was like re- you realized quickly, you know what? I just need to have a yard sale. Yeah, I you know, <laughs> I didn't I didn't intend for it to be that. I just had accumulated so many songs over the years and when I was I was playing with Hosier for about yeah. a year and I was like writing backstage and then kind of frankensteining old songs that I'd started and uh at one point I just knew like I don't know, a few weeks into recording, I was like, this is, this is a yard sale. <laughs> and I never entertained any other title. It was really, just like, Oh, wow. Yeah, no, it was oh, just shit. like a knowing. And then, you know, I bounced it off 
some people and nobody hated it. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for the most part, it was well received. But, you know, Good. I didn't get any like, no, <laughs> you know, which would have made me rethink it a little bit. But Absolutely. here we are. <laughs> no, that wow, that's cool. Normally you would have like 20 other names, right? Like if you're going to name an album or something, right? Like you're yeah. going through that that hell of trying to pick that name. That's great that you didn't have to uh, uh the best ideas come together like that. Thanks. I think so too. And I mean, creatively though too, um that's kind of where it uh exists as, as a songwriter too. There's that like I could get through a couple of crappy songs I've written um, or like, there's just this, like knowing when I landed on something and it, I have a physical, like I, you know, I, I feel emotional. I, I get goosebumps sometimes when I listen to a demo I've made and then I know I'm, I'm somewhere, you wow. know? Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like tasted that about the a lot food. of things in life. Well, yeah, I tasted the food. You know, I felt like that about like, not that. to just bring it boomerang back, but like when I moved to Texas, there was this like. I got to move to Texas and I can't tell you why I just wow. have to go. And it wow. was so weird. Wow. And then when I said, yes, all these things started falling into place. And like, I uh, basically inherited, it's a rental house, but I didn't have to look for a place to live. Uh, a friend of a friend was moving out of this house. She lived in for eight years. Wow. And, and it's like my, my dream house. I've wanted something like this in LA for so long, but I could never afford it there. And um yeah it, Dude, i think that's it's awesome yeah it's just like we all have that compass you know it's just whether or not you listen to it and i i think that um i i have not listened to it many 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 times in my life and i'm oh I'm that's back interesting on to yeah. listening to it <laughs> that's interesting so over the course of like 19 years there were other opportunities to maybe do something else and you were like nah i'm staying here did that ever happen um, it wasn't so much a geographical relocation as much as it was like, you know, relationships I shouldn't have stayed in and uh, okay. career yeah. maneuvers that I probably could have gone this way and I didn't sure. and, you know, that kind of thing. But and anyone can say that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you get there eventually. <laughs> dude, that's a that's a weird conversation. I just had that with a friend of like, you know, looking back, like with regret, like, is that worth it? you know, to look back and try to focus on your past and think, damn, if I'd have just done this and it had gone this way and mm -hmm. I would be here, here and here. And it's like, right. Is that, it, it, I, I said, no, I thought, you know what? I, I personally, maybe for mistakes to learn from them, but like, I, I don't know. It's more like, I'm all about looking ahead. Like what's tomorrow? Yeah. What, you know, what's today, of course, living in the present, but more focused on what can become, because sure. if I focus on what I didn't do, Dude, I'll be first of all, I'll be here all day. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> I haven't done yeah. a lot of shit, you know? So it's like yeah. it's too much to focus on. Well, I think that um it's a uh uh care a careful maneuver when you're trying to examine your past and excavate information that might be helpful moving forward. Um, uh, you know, regret and and sorrow aren't gonna that's, that's wasteful time. It's waste of your time and your energy. Um, yeah. it's one thing if you can sit here and be like, I think this is why I do that thing because of this. Um, and then you just have that information and then you use that accordingly, but sure. to like dwell in it is just like, Oh man, I have no interest in that. Uh, just for myself. Like, it's just, I have too much I want to do to be depressed. And you know, that will make <laughs> you depressed the, the, when yeah. you're looking back too hard, you just get stuck. But, sure. you know, in terms of the like, coulda, shoulda, woulda, I do believe like in my spirit and everything that I am that, you know, there's always going to be another ship coming by. If you miss the last one, there's another one's going to come. And, and like, and if you look at life that way, it is, ex that is exactly what's going to happen. Now the timeline might not be up to you, but the optimism and the open heart that it requires is up to you. And I like, I've, see, I've done it. I, I believe that. Yeah. That's a great uh, what, analogy. Is that the right word? Sure. I don't know. You know, <laughs> listen, listen, I'm, I'm having a Deep tough thought. time over here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, look, I'm You're not good great. with, I'm not good with vocabulary. I'm all about food. Like let's eat, you know, that, that, that I know. Okay. Look, 
<laughs> you just have to get your like food power words and then use those to express yeah, yourself. You know, we want I, to talk in spaghetti. I, I, <laughs> I, I always try to use big words that I don't know the meaning of constantly. I always do that. That's hilarious. Like, I constantly and I screw it up all the time and I just keep That's going. That's okay. I just <laughs> ram through it. Like, did anybody notice that? I don't care. I'm going to keep <laughs> going. Like, <laughs> you know, I like, I like to use big words too. Um, I do try to know what they mean, but I, you know, I, I think that, um, yeah, that's hilarious. I've done that. I, you know what? My boyfriend is a, a highly intelligent man and he's, he will always very lovingly and kindly correct me if I use the word incorrectly. And I appreciate it That's because, nice. that's you know, nice. I, I, I want to, I don't know. That's a, I need that. That's I don't a have passion that. for me. Yeah. I, look, I, I don't have that. Look, I, I speak two languages. I speak Spanish too. Okay. So like I'm constantly Ooh, go, going back and going back and forth constantly. And I'll be honest, I forget words. Okay. That's so it just, okay. it just had happens. I forget the English word or I forget the Spanish word. Then I'm fucked. I, then I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the word in any language, you know, it's like, and that happens a lot too. Sometimes, you know, it's just crazy. Uh, so again, that's, I just ran through it. I'm just used to just, just I think keep you're it doing going, great. you know, <laughs> I, I, I feel like this is an, a really great conversation. I, I understand you perfectly. <laughs> So just that's never been an issue. Nobody's it. yeah. Nobody's brought that up yet. Uh, they couldn't understand me. I love that. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Let's talk about this album. I always get sidetracked. I'm famous for that. I apologize. Let's talk about this album. Um, it's out at the end of August, right? Yes. At the end August of August. 27th. Mm -hmm. What about touring? What What's the climate with like touring right now? Well, uh, first and foremost, my record release is at Antone's on August 26th and I wanted to treat it like New Year's. So like the record comes out at midnight on the 26th, I love that. Oh, um, yeah. but I am hoping to sell that place out and pack it to the gills. Um, but I've got some little, yeah, I've got some little touring pockets here and there. Um, I got my fingers crossed that I don't run into too many hiccups uh, with COVID stuff. Cause exactly. It's all getting know, up in the air uh, there. Yeah. Um, but I do have like, I'm opening for Gary Clark for a couple shows. I don't know if that's announced yet. <laughs> uh, well, surprise. Um, I'm doing a small run, uh, with this gal Jade bird in November on the, uh, like Northwest West coast. Then I'm opening for this band called murder by death, uh, in November as well. Oh wow! And that's the Murder Midwest. So get to, yeah, okay. they're they've been around a long time. I like um, that name. I mean, yeah. Is there another yeah. type of murder that's not by so. death? I, I think murder. That that's the oxymoron there. Is, okay, is, I, I I was I was honestly asking like I like do no, I not get I, this there? Okay, murder. No, I like I, it. Listen, I like yeah. it. I'm all I'm all about <laughs> names that get you to think. You know, a little bit. You know. <laughs> Right, like <laughs> no, it's pretty good. They're they're a fun band. They've been around a long time, and I get to go through Cleveland, which I'm really excited about. That's hometown, and, right? That's hometown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. And you know, I'll be honest. I I really, uh, well, I'm doing a full band support with Gary Clark, but like, I love when I can just open for somebody by myself, like play for a half hour, forty five minutes, shred a little bit, <laughs> punch out. I'm off the clock. Sell some merch. I'm in bed by 10 30, I mean, <laughs> maybe 11. Like I am stoked Dog, yeah. that I get it. That sounds great. <laughs> right. It's just like guitar yeah. me. I'm yep. up. I'm done. Yep. I don't so, have to fill the room. autograph. Not my job. Yeah. Somebody not my job. job. No. I just got to show up. Peter, you got that? Peter, you got yeah. this? Okay, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Thank you. you just walk out through the through the crowd and just into your car. That that would be the bet epic if you just had your car running, just waiting. You just got in. I was go. opening for a band that uh. I uh, forgot. Uh, I basically. Well, this is my last tour. Oh my God. This is like, I think the last show I played before the world shut down. No, oh, wow. it was one, one or two before, but I was uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay. And 
I didn't know that this particular night I was playing a half hour earlier than I was the nights before there was just some sort of schedule change. Oh. And I was like, I was like 15 minutes away and uh, supposed to be on stage in 10. And, oh, no. and I was like, just got out of the shower and uh, and I got a call from the tour manager that's like, where are you? And I was like, I'm getting ready about to put my eyeliner on. He's like, you need to be on the stage right now. And I was like, oh my God. And like my hair was wet. I didn't have my contacts in. And I like, and I had my dad's minivan <laughs> that I'd taken on this tour. And I um, literally like pulled up, tour manager took the keys. I like threw them and I ran on the stage and then I got on stage and I was like, oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I can't see you because I'm not wearing my contact lenses. Um, and I just like, I just played and oh my God, it was so stupid. You're like, I just, fine. I just double parked the Odyssey. Okay. We, let's get this. Let's get this show going. Nice. I love it. Yeah. Nice one. Chrysler Pacifico, but Ooh. nice try. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what okay. a beauty. It's like a lounge. It's like a lazy boy on wheels. Listen, they're I really, love that. A lounge on wheels. really cozy. That sounds great. I know great. they're not sexy, but they're cozy as fuck. <laughs> Listen, I'm all about A to B, okay? Just <laughs> A to B. That's all I need. And comfort <laughs> along the way. I don't, what's on the outside? Honestly, I, why, why are people concerned of the outside of the car? You don't even see it. You're inside the car. <laughs> I, I really, I don't get that. Like, I could care less about, you know, the car. Like, dude, I, <laughs> I that is just think so that, funny. I think they're doing it wrong. They're, de they're yeah. just they're designing cars the wrong way. You, you're literally giving the show to everybody else. Yeah, that's it. You know, no, the in interior is is uh, is paramount. Uh, the lounge. It's all about yeah. the, this this lounging. Uh, I'm not a car guy, so I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm not. Yeah, that's OK. I, I don't even care I, if I could not have a car. Yeah. I would, right. Would what you would do you, that? Would you get what would be your just public chance to drive? Just public oh, transportation. I mean, yes, I've done that. I've lived in cities that I needed public transportation. Yeah, but I did that for a long I, time. Um, I love to drive. Like, I like you to do? drive by myself. I've, I've driven really? across the country alone so many times I can't even wow. count. Wow. Wow. Uh, I've taken road trips by myself. Yeah. I'm a, okay. I'm a cruiser. Okay. I'm a cruiser. Okay. You throw on some Suzer tunes. Suzer the cruiser. Suzer the cruiser. I love it. Oh, no. No, no one's ever no. called me that. I just gave myself a nickname, which no, no. one should ever do. That's no like one's ever rule. called me that. Yeah. You know, you can. They will now. They you will can't now. You give yourself yeah. a nickname. Like <laughs> That's true. You can't give yourself an, unless it's just the most perfect nickname <laughs> that just sticks, then you could. I, I mean, like. Um, uh, I hope you're stopping for good food along these road trips. If I can help it. Yeah. Definitely. Right. The, thank God over the years, um, most of America has gotten hip to uh, healthier and more delicious cuisine as opposed to like shitty roadside food that no one should ever eat. Good call. Um, and also yeah. Yelp, you know, <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can, I've got a guide and uh, Yelp. their name is oh. Yelp. We hate Yelp in the industry, in the restaurant I know. industry. We hate Yelp. Oh, man. I know, because they screw people over. They, they really screw people over. I know. I, I could do a whole, I could start a podcast about Yelp. Just, you should. And, and, and should every episode would be about would be about Yelp. Every episode yeah. would be about Yelp. No, it's no. some crooked shit. They have a whole racket going on. It's, they're like they, mobsters. They mobster. I remember them calling me when I had my food truck, like, and I had gotten a little bigger, so I had like two locations, two locations. Ooh, you mm -hmm. know, we were we were growing, we were massive. Mm -hmm. And they wanted me to Good pay you, money. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it was great. They they wanted us to pay them money so that they would not remove reviews, but move them in a particular yep. order. Yeah, and I was like to my sister in Cleveland. Yeah. I was like, What are you uh -huh. kidding? I mean, I told them to F off and we never dealt with it. I didn't care at that point. You right, right, right whatever customers just how took much it over. did they want you to pay them it was like a hundred a month oh like Nin a, 99 99 like a, a month subscription yeah, yeah to, like a business yeah you would have wow. like a business subscription and That's you had more amazing. control of your profile and you know whatever mm. bullshit they're trying to sell you on right like at yeah, the end of the no, day awful. it's a mafia hustle you know it is god, god i hate yelp 
Yeah. God, I, I, I'm I, sorry I brought them up. No, please. I, like, I feel look, like I'm ashamed. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> it's, you know what? I don't, let's talk about your eating habits. That sounded weird, but th this is what, <laughs> <laughs> that, it, that came out all wrong. I, <laughs> I meant like. You seem to be an <laughs> over snacker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should just stick with a full meal. <laughs> I just meant like, are you, you know, are you vegan? Are you vegetarian? Does that matter to you? Oh. Are you, you um, know. You know, no, I, I, I eat all the things. Um, I, um, oddly, I don't know if this is like divulging too much information, but I just, uh, got, Oh, I'm getting over a stomach bacteria that I had to take antibiotics for. So my diet is very restricted right now, which sure. is interesting. Um, but also there's something really like, I will indulge as the day is long. Like I'll drink what I want, eat what I want, smoke what I want. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> smoke that much. Well, like, you know, the I will. Dude, I do, but I, I do, uh, I do. I gotta watch Hell my yeah. pipes. I yeah. gotta watch my pipes. That's so, true. That's so, true. So, uh, but anyway, I have Not had me. stomach aches for far too long, and so yeah. I'm uh, grateful to be correcting this thing. But also, you know, I'm kind of in that like elimination diet space, which I I used to hate. But there's something to be said about like knowing that I'm healing my body, and um, I'm like I haven't had coffee. And uh, which oh, is wow. a lot. Look at me. Know? I'm drinking coffee right now. I drink coffee I know, all, I the like, <laughs> all the time. All the time. I drink it yeah. all the time. I can't. Good for you. Good Vamos. for you. Me, me encanta el I mean, café. I, oh. I'll, oh, yay. <laughs> um, I mean, I will drink it again eventually, but currently I am in a like very like a lot of broth, vegetables, rice, that kind of stuff that's easy yeah. to digest while my, sure. my stomach lining heals itself. Totally. But, um, you know, totally. typically I, uh, I mean, I love all the food. You'll um, try anything. I mean, if you can, you're willing to give anything a try. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, uh, I love Korean food. I love Vietnamese food. Um, I, I love, uh, what's the craziest Latin, thing you ever eaten? Italian. Mm -hmm. Has there been anything just like totally just nuts? I had ostrich once in um, Poland. That's interesting. It was, it was disgusting. It was it very was. <laughs> gamey. And I, I remember just being like, like we were, we had a guide who was like taking us around and I just didn't want to offend anyone, but I was so, I, I was, it was not good. How did they serve um, it? Do you remember how they. It was like in a patty, like a burger or something. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Interesting. Uh happy story uh one time <laughs> uh joe rogan gifted me with um all of this uh delicious uh meat that he'd killed himself with a crossbow was it elk <laughs> and there was elk burgers elk. and uh bear sausage and i couldn't believe how delicious Ooh. the bear sausage was oh, i was man. like rationing it I it was pretty try it i've never had amazing. it amazing yeah well, I mean, he had it like cured and, and smoked and all yeah, this yeah. stuff that was really, it was very special, but I, I, I really admire that about him too, is that like he, um, you know, hunts food for his family for the year and dude, that's you so know, cool. uses every part of the animal and that kind of stuff. And like, it doesn't waste anything. And I think that's, that's very noble. Um, uh, hundred percent. That's one of the weirder things I've eaten. Like I've never had bear before. Yeah, and it's for pretty sure. good. <laughs> Look, a lot of people haven't had uh, those things, and a lot of people don't hunt for the. I don't. I mean, a lot of chefs don't. I, I hate, kind of hate right. that. It, but it's in mm. some point we've had these conversations in the kitchen before. It's almost like that's what they do. They hunt the food mm -hmm. and bring it to us, and then we cook it. The butcher takes it, does his right. thing, and right. so it's like you kind of need the whole ecosystem because it gives everyone sure. a job too, right? At yeah. the same time, so How you're kind of you like we do it all. 
there are people that do like i remember being in england in london and i went to this market like this famous market they have downtown and they just had dangling birds that the guy this guy oh, had wow. rode up on a horse right like typical english <laughs> you know like with the gun just over his shoulder rode up on a horse and just like oh my god dumped the dumped the fowl and you know they call it foul over there you know <laughs> right, dumped right, the right. you know and they just had it dangling on ropes you know up against this wooden post i was just like where the hell is robin hood this where are we <laughs> Nottingham I was, this is crazy <laughs> I just thought th this is cool it's kind of like the fit you know from the sea if the fisherman just brings it you know straight to the restaurant I've worked in restaurants right. like that where they bring it you know yeah right into the yeah. thing you're just so cool like that's the that's where it's at so like dude I, wow. I respect anybody willing to take the time to do it uh to yeah. be honest with you uh I just can't Same. kill anything I don't think I, yeah, okay. I, got, I gotta get over that I gotta no, get over I mean, that's, it, right? It's not for everybody, unless unless you're like you know ready for the survivalist element of our our world, and it's required. You don't need to do it. You know, you're okay. I, I couldn't survive <laughs> if if there was an apocalypse. I'm going down. I'm done. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Um, <laughs> I'm, done. You know, I, I'm done. I've I've thought that before. I've been like, yeah, so what? You know, I guess I'll just you know deal with it. And yeah. then you know, I'll just I've deal met, with it. <laughs> I've met Hello. enough people that are like preppers. Yeah. And um <laughs> and then they're like, Well, you have to have a plan. And I'm like, but do I? And but also I'll just go to your house because you love me and I love you. So thanks for doing all the work. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, dude, do you want to be alone? We could be, we do this together. Look, I'm fun. I'll be over here. I can yeah, I'm fun. You. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, who wouldn't want me in their bunker? So I, I don't, I sing I don't songs. worry about the bunker. Yeah. <laughs> I don't worry about the bunker. You can take care of the bunker. I will be your friend and entertainer. <laughs> dude, that is so funny. That's just we smart. Can play Yahtzee. Listen, I love it. <laughs> Know your strengths. <laughs> this is smart. This is I gotta find a friend with a bunker. You'll be the chef in the bunker. Listen, you know? exactly. I can this cook is, some stuff. You you're know, covered, and I can't man. dude. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, you know what? This I got I got away now. I got away into the bunker. <laughs> you know it's this funny is great. <laughs> i love it okay let's talk some places you've eaten real quick in austin uh since you've been okay. there that you like any shout outs you want to give to yeah. some cool um, places i really like this restaurant restaurant called peche uh yeah it's on on fourth street um you know it's french cuisine and it was just the simplest like like chicken and potatoes, but the chicken, the potatoes were made with duck fat and the chicken, like the skin was so crispy and it was so tender and there was so much flavor that I, like I was there like two months ago and I still think about it. Like, wow. oh my God, that chicken was incredible. That's a good uh, restaurant. I love Peche. Um, I love Justine's is pretty great. Uh, um, Laundrette is in my neighborhood and um, really love that restaurant. Yeah, um, that's just a great Just such place. a, you know, I don't really know what I'm ordering and like, and then you get it and you're like, Oh, I understand. Like the, the descriptive <laughs> element of the, it, it's like so confusing. You just totally. have to, you know, take a chance. Totally. Um, <laughs> I, there's this, um, food truck. Uh, it's there we go. style that okay. is outside of this place called the sagebrush that I really like. And the sagebrush is new and it's a music venue. And there's like, all these pool tables and there's always a country and Western band or a soul band or any kind of band playing. Um, and they do free two-step lessons on Tuesdays, <laughs> but they have this great what? Cajun food truck out front. That's, that's great. delicious. And um, i trying to think what else. Those are the that's three. A, that that's come a to lot. Mind. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, I hate to put people on the spot when that happens. Cause sometimes it's hard to like start naming play, you know, start naming places. Uh, no, those are all, you named some great places uh, for sure. I'm God, glad you named a food truck too. I I love it. I mean, I'm I'm just getting started. Like there's there's a lot more ground to cover. So absolutely. Um, oh making gosh. My rounds. Austin has. <laughs> I, I mean, LA has great food, and it's a great scene. And you know, there's nothing. You know, it's just different. Austin has. There's something special about Austin, man. Like Austin doesn't allow mm -hmm. a lot of chains. Right. So mm -hmm. you just have a lot of individually owned chef driven restaurants yeah. all over yeah, the love place. It. And, and not they, even like are they restricted on chains. I didn't know that. It's not that they're restricted. It's more like, yeah, they kind of are. They kind of just, you know, you're not going to find a TGI Fridays in Austin. Okay, it's not going to happen. God. 
Oh, dude, God, it's, we, don't, we don't allow that. Brings me back to road sadness. <laughs> I mean, you're going to see a McDonald's and a Subway, right. okay, but mm-hmm. very few. You're, they're right. very limited, okay. That is true. You're going to see more P. Terry's, which is you know Waterburger, you know right. more more local stuff. Um, but those are but, local chains. Yeah, Waterburger is now has changed. Now it's owned by a national company, but oh, it's still it still is very Texas in a lot of ways. But okay. P. Terry's is very Austin. P. Terry's is super okay. Austin uh, for sure. But just things like that, right? Like, and, and every place is tons of food trucks and food trailers and food parks and just again, chef driven restaurants and I'm Mm -hmm. all about it. And one thing I want to say real quick about the menus. Okay. Chefs out there for you listening, you know, (laughs) we need to not complicate them too much. Okay. I hate, I hate when I go and it's just like a bunch of stuff I can't understand. It's a bad menu. I'm sorry, but it's just like, that's, I'm tired. What the hell is that? Like it gets to make it simpler. You know, yeah. make it simple. I've had tons of conversations with chefs like that. The the best place mm-hmm. is just a simple, nice little simple menu. Keep mm-hmm. us nothing against these places that have no, great food to, and these it's great. Like back fa- to music, you said it earlier. Yeah, Keep it simple. Yeah, yes. and then if you want to get more uh, variety, just switch it up. You don't yes. need to give it all at once. Well, you can't yeah. do something good. It's in, like in a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Can only do one position at a time. I feel like we should be smoking a pipe right now or something, you know, (laughs) like "Mm." (laughs) that was uh, before the podcast uh, for me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not cool. I'm not. I'm not kidding at all. No, I'm not. (laughs) I mean, it's no it's no secret on the podcast there uh, for sure. Look, uh, I was in Austin up until the apocalypse, the snow apocalypse. So I'm in Dallas now. I just moved to Dallas. So for, for my I was in Austin for almost 10 years uh dude, i'll be every, playing there on the 25th too the, of this month where of are you playing month. of next month where are you playing Ooh, at uh off the top of my I'll, head i don't I'll know i'll look it up mm. i'll look it up yeah don't yeah even, don't okay. even sweat it well if i can't i'll try to come see you for real i would man i would love to see you play oh my god uh It'll there's so fun. many great venues here too uh in dallas yeah, I so dallas. i know it's I oh, dallas. Dude, it's it's a cool <laughs> it's a cool it's way different than austin but still dallas gets a a weird rap that it's not really huh. what it is Dallas oh, is I think very it's a great town. it really is. It's a super yeah. cool town. I don't know. It mm-hmm. gets sort of a I don't know what people think of Dallas Fort Worth is different than Austin. Like people hate on it in Austin a lot. That, that's that's, a, lame. that's a that's a big thing. If you're from Austin, you know, you sort of hate on Dallas. It's like, oh, don't go up to Dow a bunch of well, uh, they're all on the same team as far as I'm concerned. Dude, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, we're all Texans here. So <laughs> Gosh, right? I mean, yes. Okay. Anything I didn't mention, uh, you know, before we go, I, I just want to make sure anything I didn't bring up, the album's coming out. Uh, how do, how do people stay connected with you? Sure. Uh, I'm on all the platforms. Um, my handle <laughs> is at Suzanto, S O O Z A N T O. Perfect. Suzanto. Or just, you know, my name is Suzanne Santo. I'm not, I'm not hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you know, I hope I get to see folks out on the road. I have a feeling that, um, I have a feeling that, you know what? I'm not even going to share that feeling (laughs) because it's, that's not on the yard sale, right? I don't want to, I don't want to feed into the, the darkness. I think that anything's possible. And I, I look forward to playing more shows and seeing folks out there and getting this record out into the universe. And I've really enjoyed this conversation a lot. This was a blast. That's awesome. I'm glad. <laughs> Thanks I'm for glad. having me. Dude, this is so fun. Absolutely. No, thank you for taking the time. Uh, I know you're busy. I know you got a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, we appreciate anyone uh, taking the time to, to talk with us. So, no, I, this was awesome. I really appreciate it. Made me laugh a lot. I love laughing. So. Oh, good. Me too. Yeah. Oh, I love laughing. That's what I do all day. I, I make myself laugh I, if I get bored. Good. I just, yeah, right. It's a special quality. Same. I laugh yeah. at everything. Listen, yeah. people think I'm crazy uh, sometimes. No, you know, no, you, yes. that, that's a, that's a, a good superpower. Yeah. Okay. okay good. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. All right, uh, Suzanne. Well, listen, uh, my, uh, you know, best of luck with the new album, the tours, you. you know, all of that. Uh, my best to you and your family and just stay safe out thank there. You. And thank you so much uh, for you. joining us. Really do appreciate it. Thank you. All the best to you. Take thank care, you man. so much. All right, brother. Make it <laughs> Bye. Bye. 
And now it's time for my favorite part of the show, the end credits. This is everyone responsible for making the show happen. Executive producer, Sebastian Sauerborn. Podcast manager, Nevena Ponovich. Marketing manager, Caroline Grape. Video and audio editors, Danilo Vojnov and Pavel Sebastianovich. Thumbnail designer, Marko Vukovic. Social media manager, Ursa Rusman. Guest outreach, Corey Menciez. Designing image quotes, Jay Apuya. Social media videos, Labri Fernandez. Outreach support, Yonet Del Mundo. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. Yeah.